do what I called you to do. Amen. If you have your Bibles, there is the word of the Lord found recorded in the gospel according to Matthew. Chapter number 14. Very familiar story that's in the Bible. But I found little nuggets buried deep in the gospel that I want to share with you on this afternoon. Matthew 14, beginning at verse number 22. It reads, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Yeah. When evening came, he was there all alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves. Yeah. Uh, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter asked him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to tag this passage of scripture today. Can you stand the rain? Yes. Amen. Can you stand the rain? Anytime someone has a type of uh, celebration, whether it be a marriage, a baby shower, or just a party, they, they send out invitations uh, to their family, friends, and loved ones. Anyone that they uh, desire to have um, in their inner uh, party receives an invitation. Uh, and just FYI, if someone's having a party and you didn't receive an invitation, chances are they don't want you to come. Okay, so, so don't go crashing uh, the party, but but an invitation is sent out to those who are invited uh, to celebrate in whatever achievement uh, that that person might be celebrating. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting here because we have to understand that, that Jesus sends out invitations. Yes, yes. Amen. He, he sends invitations out to, to invite yes. us to partake in certain aspects of his life. Yes. Um, and, and not everyone receives the same invitation. Yes. Um, your, your purpose and your call uh, might not be the same purpose or call that uh, me and Pastor Harris has, but you will have an invitation yes. uh, to, to come and be a part of something that Christ is yes. moving yes. Uh, in your life. Yes. And it's important, brothers and sisters, that, that we understand that, that when Christ gives an invitation, that the invitation is not always going to be an invitation that's going to be exciting and fun. Yes. Uh, sometimes the invitation is going to cause you to have some turmoil in your life. And that's why a lot of folks refuse to answer yeah. uh -huh. the invitation. Yeah. Uh, because you don't know uh, what's at the end of it. Uh, Jesus' invitation is a blank check. Yes. And on. he'll fill in the, the blanks uh, when he decides to fill in the blanks. Yes. Uh, he just says, you just sign on the dotted line, and, and I'll fill in the rest yeah. as we go. And so I'll ask the question, uh, can you stand the rain? Yeah. Walk with me uh, through the text. Pay close attention here that 
Jesus tends to, to use us to call us at a time when we are most high. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta admire Jesus for how he does that. Should he, he don't call you when you ain't feeling good. He calls you right after the service is over. Yes. They just sing your favorite song. Uh, the preacher just preached your favorite text. Yes. You was as high as all get out. That's when Jesus calls you and say, "Hey, uh, can you come do something for me?" Uh, when y'all giddy. And they say, yes, Lord. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come. And that's exactly how he does his disciples. Uh, because he had just finished performing a miracle. And it says, immediately, he made his disciples go to the other side. While they were still giddy. Uh, they were they was full, still full of the, the fish basket. Uh, they just partaking in. They was they was in a good mood, mm -hmm. and Jesus uh, sends them on the way. Mm -hmm. We have to understand uh, that uh, when Jesus sends us places, uh, the only thing that we can rest assured is that we're going to reach right. the destination. Right. Uh, what we don't know is what's going to happen in the meantime. Uh, we don't know the path that we're going to have to take. We don't know what's going to come up against us. All we know is that Jesus said, let us go. So therefore, we're going to reach our destination. And I'm glad to understand because when it comes to us even accepting God as Lord and Savior, we have to understand we have a promise at the end of our life. But the, but the meantime has chaos, turmoil, ups and downs, even though we know God is good. We're going to have to go through some things, but there's rewards yeah. at the end. Yeah. Tell us them here. Yeah, we going. Y'all, y'all just go on, go on and go. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because I ain't quite ready yet. Uh, Jesus here needed some some alone time. Mm -hmm. He needed some some me time. So he sent them off that he might go off and, and, and pray by his own self. Yes. And we want to have to, if we want to be true Christians, true Christ-like people, yes. we're going to have to have a strong prayer life. Yes. You have to have a strong prayer life, not the prayer that you just pray before you eat the last five seconds, yes. not the prayer that you pray before you go to bed and you have sleep, it only lasts about 10 seconds, but a sincere prayer life that you will go down on your knees and stay down on your knees till your knees start to hurt. That you will stay in conversation with God until you get an answer, until God, you know that God hears you. You won't get up until you satisfy your time with the master. Yeah. Jesus needed some alone time and sent his disciples on off. What was real interesting to me here, uh, Brother Preacher, is Jesus lets us know that we need to learn from our past. Uh, we need to know that, that when God rescued us in our past, God can still rescue us. He, he wants us to, to, to believe that, that what I did for you then, I'm still capable of doing. Um, but, but what helps us is is to understand that God gives us these, these trials that sometimes repeat because you should be a little bit smarter now yeah, than you was the last time you went through this situation. Uh -huh. You shouldn't have to go through the same thing over and over and over again. You should be a little bit smarter, a little bit brighter, yeah. that this time when you go through a situation, it shouldn't catch you quite off guard. Yeah. You remember chapter 8? Jesus rode with them on the boat. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was sleeping through the storm. Mm -hmm. This time, Jesus sent them on by themselves. Yeah. Uh, you would have to go on this one by yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me, brothers and sisters, that we have to understand that even though Jesus sent us and we was by ourselves, we still wasn't alone. Well. 
He's still in control. All right. But he wants you to, to learn from your past mistakes. Yes. He is a present help yes. in a time of trouble. Yes. Here they are riding Sister Jackie by themselves mm -hmm. on the boat all alone. Yes. And here Jesus sees them, and now they are a distance away. Yes. And the boat uh, begins to be beaten mm -hmm. by the waves, uh, for the winds uh, was against them. Mm -hmm. I like this, uh, because... We need to understand that even though Jesus sent them, doesn't mean that the winds won't be against them. It just means that I'm going to arrive right. at my destination. Yeah. But the enemy wants to do everything to keep you from reaching your destination. Yeah. He wants to do everything possible to make you doubt God's word. Yeah. Uh, so, so the winds were against them. I like the fact, uh, it's one of the nuggets that I've dug out of here, that the winds was against them, but they were still headed in the right direction. Glory to God. How can the winds be against you in a sailboat, but you still sailing in the right direction? Because God has a purpose for your destination. And the winds can't stop you from reaching where God is trying to take you. Your friends can't stop you. From reaching your destination. Yeah, yeah. A lack of money. Can't stop you. From reaching your destination. Yeah. A bad back. Can't stop you. From reaching your destination. Yeah. Nothing can come against you. That can stop you from reaching. Yeah. Your destination. Because God said let us go. Yes. To the other side. Yes. These brothers. Once again, though, we're caught in a storm. But notice the growth in the disciples. This time, they wasn't afraid of the storm and the rain. This time, uh, they wasn't quite worried about perishing in the storm. But what they was afraid of was when they saw Jesus walking on the water. Uh, because God has never walked on the water before. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's never, he's never showed uh, his glory walking across the ocean. Yes. And therefore they was afraid when they saw him walking on the water. And pose the question is, it must be, it must be a ghost uh, walking across the ocean. But look at his words again. It says, but immediately yeah. Jesus spoke to them. Yeah. Uh, we need to, we need to, to trust God for his immediate response. Yeah. Well. Uh, God is faster than a microwave. He's, yeah. he, he does work immediately. Yes. Uh, it doesn't take him long to, no, to change your outcome, to, yes. to change your situation. He can do it immediately. Yes. Immediately he spoke uh, to the situation and tells them to take heart. It is me. And don't be afraid. In other words, he tells them to be of good cheer yes. and be encouraged because God is with us. Yes. What's amazing is in this occasion here, uh, Bridget, he doesn't speak to the storm. Yes. He doesn't speak to the winds and the waves. Mm -hmm. 
He speaks to his children to calm their fears. Uh, he speaks to the very heart of the matter that's troubling you. Uh, he doesn't have to speak to your surroundings any longer because you are no longer affected by the surroundings yeah. But you are affected by a heart condition. On, so Jesus has to speak yeah. to your heart. Yeah. Tells his disciples, calm down. Yeah. I've got this. Yeah. And he speaks to, to their fears. Don't worry. Because when it comes to faith in God, what hurts us is our fears. Mm -hmm. Our fears make us doubt. And our doubt make it impossible to please God. Yeah. Yeah. He speaks to, to the hearts. Calm them down. Mm -hmm. pump, pump your brakes. Yes. I, I've got this. This is, mm -hmm. this is me. In the calming situation here, uh, because it says they thought he was a ghost, but yet they recognized his voice. Thank you, Jesus. He rec they recognized his voice yeah. uh, because the Bible says that my sheep uh, will know my voice. Yeah. That, that yeah. If you can't see me, you can, and, but as long as you can hear me, yeah. you know that it's me talking. Come on. And because he spoke to them, that's what calmed their fears. Yeah. I like the fact that we need to start listening to that calm voice yes. that tells you to get up off your chair and put your gray suit on and get on up because I'm speaking to you. And when I speak to you, you've got to move. Yes. He calms them down. And now they, they feel a little encouraged again. So much so that Brother Peter decides that, Lord, if it's you, yes. Lord, command me yes. to come to you mm -hmm. on the water. Mm -hmm. well, Peter, what do you mean, if it's me? Yes. You know it's me. Yes. But I can tell you because of your questioning, mm -hmm. this outcome ain't going to end mm -hmm. uh, the way you think it is. Uh, because you are doubting the word of God before you even step out yes. of the boat. Yes. You, you are already scared yes. uh, before you even step out mm -hmm. of the boat. Anybody else in here, God ever asked you to do something you were scared before you even said yes? yes. Uh, you were scared before you even took that step? I was yes. already worried if it was going to work out. I was already confused. Yes. Uh, I, I was already timid about the situation mm -hmm. and I ain't even stepped out the boat yet. Yeah. But Lord, it extends them an invitation. He simply said, uh, come. Mm -hmm. uh, come, all ye who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yeah. Come unto me. Yeah. Bring me all your cares. Yeah. Cast them upon me because I care for you. Yeah. Yeah. He's given us invitations, but we are already nervous and scared before we even lay it at his feet. And because of our doubt, we don't let God work it out. Yes. Come on, Peter. I'm extending you the invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, since you is so giddy that you can't wait for me to get on the boat, mm -hmm. you decide you want to get off the boat, mm -hmm. but just come on. Yes. And Peter began to walk on the water. You ain't got to raise your hand, but you ever, again, you, you started out strong. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was going good. Yes. Everything was working in your favor. Mm -hmm. 
you decided to trust the Lord with all your heart and to lean not to your own understandings and in all your ways you decided to acknowledge him and you seen God directing your path and your path looks good everything uh, was working out according to your plan and it was easy to stay on course because God was your focus and your attention but the minute you took your eyes off Jesus well, and saw exactly what you was doing and where you was at, you began to doubt if God said come at all. Yes. It must only be me in here. Uh, that's ever doubting if it was God that said it at all. In the minute we stop trusting the red letters, we got trouble brewing in our lives. Yeah. I would argue uh, it wasn't just the fact that he saw the winds and the waves. More so that he doubted God saying, come. Yes. Uh, because if I'm trusting God when he said come, it doesn't matter if the wind is blowing. It don't matter if it's raining. All that matters is God said, come. Right. And his word uh, supersedes anything yeah. uh, that is acting up in my surroundings. Yeah. He said, started looking around, and the boy got nervous. He let his carnal eye uh, fool him into doubting the word of God. As he looked around and saw the winds and the waves, mm -hmm. he thought it was impossible for a man to walk on the water. Yeah. And because his faith uh, started failing him, he began to sink. Yeah. Uh, he began to, uh, to see that the the water no longer carried his weight mm. and started dropping in the water. Well. And he cried out unto the Lord, Lord, save me. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I'm sinking in the water. And for the third time, the Bible said immediately, Jesus uh, reached out his hand and, and saved him yes. and pulled him up. Uh, he didn't wait till he started seeing bubbles in the water. Uh, he did it immediately. Yeah. Uh, which lets us understand that uh, what happens here when we, when we call unto the Lord, we're looking at, at a timeline. And we think mm -hmm. our timeline is dim. Yes, yes. And we think that if God don't come rescue us right now, that we ain't going to make it. Uh -huh. But we will have to understand that, that God's immediately is exactly right when we need it the most. Yes. That's God's immediately. Yes. It's exactly when we need it the most. That's when God shows up. He says, I'll let you go through some stuff, but I ain't gonna let it take you out. I'll let you endure some things, but it ain't gonna get too far off on you, because I'm gonna proceed and act immediately before it overtakes you. And he uses uh, uses it as a teaching moment. Uh, Peter, you have a a, a, a neat ability to put your foot in your mouth. But I like people who don't mind struggling for the Lord. Well. It's good when you have somebody uh, that will take a chance yeah. on serving a true and living God. Amen. It's good when we go through some trials and tribulations yeah. To tell God that you need to help my unbelief. 
I'm struggling trying to figure this thing out and I'm trying to do it by myself. But I love the Lord because he heard my cry and he pitied my every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'm going to hasten to his throne. I said I love the Lord and I surely, truly do. For he heard all of my cries. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'm going to keep on hasten to his throne. God said tears might be streaming down your face, but you're going to have to keep on trusting in the Lord. You might not have all that you think you have, but you're going to have to learn to keep on trusting in the Lord. I've stopped by here to let somebody know that your destination is in God's hands. And God has a plan for your life and it's a plan to prosper you and to move you beyond your circumstances. All you need to do is trust in the Lord with all thy heart. God said, I will calm your storm and seas as long as you can stand the rain. I'll be there for you when you need me as long as you can stand the rain. I'm going to walk on water and make myself to you as long as you can stand the rain. Keep on praying, keep on serving, keep on trusting, and keep on believing. God will come through, and it's going to come through immediately. Right when you need him the most. You might be feeling like you're sinking. But he's going to grab you immediately, mm -hmm. right when mm -hmm. you need him yeah. the most. Amen. So the question is, can you stand the rain? Yes, sir. Amen.